Hello, we're going to start chapter 16 today. This is the last chapter in our textbook, and the title is The Probability and the Binomial Theorem. The first part of chapter 16 is going to talk about something called the counting principle. And you learned about the counting principle back in Algebra 1 and maybe even before that. And that means that if you have uh, more than one activity, and one of the activities can occur in any of m ways, like three or five or seven different ways, and then after that another or a second activity can occur in a different number of ways, then if you want to know how many different ways both can occur, then all you have to do is multiply the number of ways of the first activity times the number of ways of the second activity. For example, let's say you have a building try to draw a building here. And the building has two entrances. And then once you get inside the building, it has four stairways up to the second floor. How many different ways can a person enter the building and then get up to the second floor? Well, he can either enter the building through the first door or the second door. So there are two activities. There's getting into the building and then there's going up the stairs. So the person has a choice of two doors to go in. That's the two different ways to get into the building. And then they have a choice of four different stairways to get up to the second floor. So you multiply them together and you have eight different ways a person can get to the second floor. Example two, let's say there are 10 girls and 11 boys in a math class. In how many different ways can a boy and a girl be selected to represent the class. Well, if I want to select a boy, I have one of 11 choices. So here's my selection of boys. And if I want to select a girl, I have a different number. I have 10 different ways I could select. So if I have 11 choices to choose a boy, and then I want to select a girl, I have 110 different um, ways or in other words, 110 different boy-girl combinations in this example. The third example, let's say you have a race and there are 12 runners. How many different ways can a sec first, second, and third place medal be awarded? Well, I have first place, I have second place, and I have third place. And if there are 12 runners in a race, then there are 12 possibilities to finish first. And once that first place, fini first place person finishes, then there are 11 people left to finish second place. And then after the first place and the second place come in, there are 10 different um, ways there can be a third place finisher. And that's it. So then you just multiply 12 times 11 times 10, and you get 1320. So there are 1,320 different ways the first, second, and third place medals can be awarded. The next example, five people walk into a classroom that has nine empty seats. How many different ways can the people sit in this, the seats? Well, if you have nine empty seats, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine empty seats, let's say each one of these is an empty seat. So let's say the first person walks in. So the first person walks in, and the first person has a choice of nine seats to sit in. So that's the first activity. The, the first person has nine choices. Well, he sits down in that one place. Now the second person walks in, and that person has a choice of eight seats to sit in. And now the third person comes in, and there are seven empty seats left. Then the fourth person comes in, and the fourth person has a choice of six empty seats to sit in. And then the last person, the fifth person, walks in, and that fifth person has a choice of five empty seats to sit in. And how many different ways? Nine times eight times seven times six times five is 15,120 different ways. These numbers are going to be very big in this chapter. 15,120 different ways.
that these people can sit in the seats. So you sometimes you want to draw a little diagram or some, somehow mark out what's exactly happening in each question to see what you're going to be multiplying by what. Now the next section is called permutations and combinations. And a permutation is just if you arrange objects in a specific order, and these objects can be letters or numbers or, or any kind of object. We usually, t we usually work with letters and numbers for objects. So for example, let's say we take the numbers 1, 2, and 3. Those are our objects. And if we want to figure out how many different ways we can arrange those objects, or how many different numbers we can come, um, come up with with those integers, then you have those different combinations. And then this, the order is important because the number 123 is the di different than the number 132, which is different than the number 231. And all these numbers are different. So order is important when you're talking about um, putting numbers together. And the number of permutations the n objects, now in this example n was 3 because we had three different objects and an object in this case is a number, take an r at a time. So what we're doing is we're taking all three of those numbers at a time because we're using all three of them. Sometimes we don't use all of the numbers like maybe we'll have the digits 1 through 9 and we only want to make three digit numbers out of them so we would have 10 different objects taken three at a time. So on the calculator um, the buttons that you will push are NPR. So in this example we have three objects and we're taking all three of them and if we want to know how many um, different combinations we have or permutations we have we can count it up one two three four five six or we could do this um, this fancy thing called NPR. P means permutations, N means I have a total of N objects and R means I'm taking how many of those objects. In this case right up here I have three objects and I'm finding how many permutations of using all three of them up I could have. I could just count this up and get six or I could take my calculator out. So take your calculator out and take good notes on this. First you have to press the button, the three button. And then you press the math button and go over to PRB and you go down to option two where it says NPR and then you press a three. Three NPR three is six or we could have just counted them up. But NPRs get pretty big pretty fast, so it's, um, it's a nice function on the calculator. So what we're going to do is we're just going to practice on the calculator for a couple of times some various NPR problems. Now let me tell you that if these two are equal to each other, if the N is equal to R, then when N equals R, then all you have to do is really call that 4 factorial, 4 factorial, is equal to 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Whatever the factorial is, you start with that and you just multiply all the numbers down to 1. So on the calculator you can do 4 math PRB NPR 4 if you want, that's 24. Or you could do math PRB and look down at option 4, that's an exclamation point and that means factorial. So option four, whoops, I wanted to do four factorial. So four factorial is also 24. So four factorial is 24. This means I have seven objects, like maybe I have the numbers one through seven, and I'm trying to find out how many three digit numbers I can get out of it. That's the same thing as seven times six times five, which is really seven factorial, but you stop after you get to the third number. So you got three numbers here, that's where you stop. So seven times six times five, you can do it the long way, or you could do seven, math, PRB, option two, NPR three. You get the same answer, 210. And 10P2 is 10 times nine, because you, you do 10 factorial, but you only take the first two numbers, so that's 90, or you could do 10, math, PRB, option two, and you get 90 that way. <coughs> so
So now these examples, these are typical problems that you would see. How many ways can four friends, friends are the object, four friends stand in line to purchase movie tickets? So we could do this a bunch of ways. We're taking all four friends and we're standing them in a line. So we can say, oh, here's our line that we're in line to purchase movie tickets. How many ways can the first friend stand? Well, he has four choices. He could be first, second, third, or fourth. And now the next friend would have three choices. He could be second, third, or fourth. And then the next friend would have two choices. He could be third or fourth. And then the last friend, he would only have one choice. Or in other words, we have four friends. We're trying to find out how many different ways they can stand in order if all four of those friends are in the line. So 4 times 3 is 12. 12 and 12 is 24. I'm not going to use my calculator. It's pretty easy. 24. How many different ways can the letter of the word pencil be arranged? So pencil has one, two, three, four, five, six letters. So I'll put six dashes down here for all the ways we can arrange those objects. These, these letters are the objects. So how many choices do we have to put in the first position? We can put any of those six letters in. And then once, once the first one goes away, then we only have five options to put our second letter in. Then we only have four options to put our next letter, our third letter in. We have three options to put our fourth letter in, two options to put our fifth letter in, and then last we only have one option left. So we are actually taking all six of the letters in the word pencil and we're finding how many permutations we have of this, which is the same thing as six factorial. And so I'm just going to do six math PRB. I think the fastest way is to do six factorial and that's 720. Next, how many different ways can pencil be arranged if the first letter must be a vowel? Well, this changes things up a little bit. We still have six letters that we're arranging. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, if the first letter has to be a vowel, we only have two vowels in the word pencil, so you have a choice of two letters. You, you can either put the E or the I there. And once you get rid of the E or the I, then you're going to have only five letters left, then you're going to have four letters left, and three letters left, two letters left, one letter left. So if we multiply two times five times four times three times two times one, two times five times four times three times two, you'll get 240. So there's 240 as opposed to 720 different ways. You can just randomly put the letters of pencil together. There's only 240 different ways if the first letter has to be either an E or an I. Now, the next one says we're only going to use four out of the six letters of pencil. So we're not going to take them all. We're only going to use four letters. So if we're only going to use four letters, we're going to have four slots for each one of those letters. And in the first position, we can put any of those six letters in. So we have a choice of six letters to put in the first position. We have a choice of five letters to put in the second. We have a choice of four letters, and then we have a choice of three letters, but we're not going to use them all up. So that's the same thing as I have six objects. I'm finding the number of permutations of four of them. And then we can put that in our calculator. We've got 30 times 12, which is 360. And you can check this on your calculator. I hope you are when you're following along. The next thing we're going to do is find how many permutations of things taken n at a time when r are identical. If you notice the word pencil, we didn't have any duplicate letters. They were all unique letters, P-E-N-C-I-L. They're all different letters. But what if you have a word like freeze when you have three different E's in them? Well, if you try to find um, how many different arrangements of the word freeze, you have F-R-E-E-Z-E. -E -E. You have six letters. But if you put an E in this first position, then it's the same thing as putting this E is the same thing as putting this E in. So the easy way to figure out how many different arrangements is to take n factorial, n is the number of objects you have. In this case, we have six objects, which are six letters.
But we have three E's, so three is three are identical, so R is equal to three. And we're not going to have six factorial different combinations. We're going to have six factorial divided by three factorial. And you can get that answer in a number of different ways, but I think the easiest way is hopefully you're using your fraction button and doing six math PRB option four. There's six factorial and divide that by three math PRB option four. Six factorial over three factorial, and you have 120 different ways you can put the word, the letters of freeze together. 120. So let's try roller coaster. Roller coaster's got a lot of letters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen letters. So a total of thirteen objects. But we have identical. First, let's look at the R's. We have one, two, three R's. So you're going to divide that by three factorial. Those are the R's. Now let's look at the O's. We have one, two O's. So we're going to multiply three factorial times two factorial in the bottom. So that takes care of the O's. Now we have two L's. So we have two factorial for the L's. Now what about the E's? We have two E's, so it's two factorial down here. There's only one C, there's only one A, one S, one T. And we've already taken care of those letters. So that's what we're going to put in our calculator exactly like that. If you don't have a fraction button on your calculator, you're going to have to surround your denominator with parentheses. But I'm going to use my, my uh, whoops, alpha y equals my... So we have 13 math PRB option 4 over 3 math PRB option 4. Now you don't have to put times in between or parentheses. You can just follow this up with 2 math PRB. There's 2 factorial, 2 factorial, and then another 2 factorial. So this is what we just wrote down. And then we have the number of different ways roller coaster can be. There's still a lot of different ways. So yes, that is not wrong. It is 1297, 29600. So what is that? 129,729,600 different ways roller coaster can be arranged. Holy cow. How about Kingston? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We have 8 letters in Kingston. Now there's only one K. There's only one I. There are two N's. One S, one G, one S, one T, and one O. So we have eight factorial over two factorial. Which is 20,160 different ways Kingston can be arranged. And what about calculator? If you want to shut this off and try this on your own, that would be wonderful. And then turn it on to see if you're right. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think we have 10 letters in calculator. And we have two C's. We have two A's. We have two L's. One U, one T, one O in one R. So it looks like it's 10 factorial over 2 factorial, 2 factorial, 2 factorial, which is 453600, 453,600 different ways calculator can be arranged. Now the next section is talking about combinations. Combinations are a little different than permutations. In permutations, order was important. In combinations, order is not important. For example, if I want to put together a committee of three people, let's say John, Ann, and Lee are on it, or just imagine yourself on this committee. Does it matter if I say John, Ann, and, or, and Lee, or if I say Lee, Ann, and John? Or if I say Lee, John, and Ann, it's just a committee. 
It's just a group of three people together on a committee. It does not matter what order I say their names on. They're just a group of people. So if you want to find out how many different combinations of things, that's when order is not important. It's kind of like permutations, but the, it is NCR for combinations instead of permutations. So just like combination, just like permutations, you're going to get, do the math and the PRB option. If you want to find out how many different combinations of seven objects taken three at a time, you do seven math PRB option three and CR3. So that would be 35. And 10 C2, 10 math PRB option 3, that would be 45. These are smaller numbers than the permutations. So if you want to go through an example of how many different combinations of five letters can be chosen from the alphabet. Well, the alphabet has 26 letters, as you know, so that's how many objects we have. And how many different combinations of five letters can be chosen? So we have 26 objects to choose our five from. So we just do 26 math PRB option 3 and we're choosing five letters. So we have 65,780 different combinations. How many different combinations of three consonants out of 21 consonants and two vowels out of five vowels can be chosen? Sorry for that interruption. My phone went off. Um, anyways, if you want to do combinations of three consonants out of 21, then you do 21, choose 3. And, and means multiply when it comes to probability. So we're going to multiply that by, or this is like the counting principle. We have five vowels to choose two out of. So we're going to just do 21 math, PRB, NCR3 times 5 math PRB and CR2. You don't really need um, you don't really need um, parentheses or anything when you do the NCRs. So that would be um, 13,300. And then last, the last thing we're going to do is find out how many different committees, now when you see the word committees, you think NCR, of six people can be chosen. When you see the word chosen, you think also NCR, choose and committee, they all start with a C, that's NCR. So you have a group of 10 people that you're choosing six people out of that committee. So you just do 10, math, PRB, NCR, six. And you got 210. That's how many committees you can make of six people out of ten. And that's it for today. See you tomorrow in class.